Time to know the news of the week. I'm Hannah Tabios. This is the NB Rundown. After months of preparations, it's now all systems go for President Rodrigo Duterte's fourth state of the nation address on Monday. The National Capital Region Police Officer NCRPO said around 14,000 police officers will be deployed in Metro Manila with 9,000 of them will be assigned in Quezon City for the event in Batasang Pambansa Complex. The PNP Highway Patrol Group will also deploy 72 motorcycle units and 36 mobile cars to ensure the security of the VIPs. On Wednesday, NCRPO Chief Major General Guillermo Eliazar already met with the representatives of various stakeholders, including leaders of activist groups, to ensure the peaceful conduct of the activity. Eliazar said they are expecting at least 15,000 rallyists on Sona Day. Quezon City Police District has also released its rerouting traffic advisory in observance of the event. Meanwhile, the palace said Duterte's fourth sauna will be short. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo noted that President Duterte will no longer discuss his administration's achievements as these have already been presented in pre-sona forums. Rather, the chief executive said he will take the event as an opportunity to educate his critics. Manila's top diplomat Teodoro Loxin Jr. said on Tuesday that the country will remain a member of the United Nations Human Rights Council or UNHRC. This despite the council's adoption of last week of a resolution seeking to review the Duterte administration's war on drugs over the last three years. In a tweet, Loxin noted that UNHRC vote is a small and harmless matter. Hence, the country will remain a member nation as a pedagogical duty to teach Europeans moral manners, according to Luxin. He said the Philippine government will not also severe diplomatic relations with any country. Previously, he tweeted that he never considered cutting ties with Iceland, the nation who tabled the proposal to the UN's top human rights body. But presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo insisted that the Iceland-led resolution was based on false information and unverified facts. Panelo quoted Loxin in a palace press briefing on Tuesday, said investigators from the UN will not be allowed entry into the country and will have their visas denied by the immigration. As the health department declared for the first time a national dengue alert, Health Secretary Francisco Duque III urged the public to practice the 4S strategy. 4S stands for Search and Destroy Mosquito Breeding Places, Self-Protection Measures, Seek Early Consultation, and Support Fogging or Spraying if there is an impending danger. He said it is the most effective way to combat dengue, which is now a year-round viral disease. During Monday's press briefing, Duque revealed that the DOH Epidemiology Bureau have already recorded around 106,000 dengue cases, including 450 deaths nationwide from January 1 to June 29 this year. The figure is 85% higher compared to the same period last year. Most dengue cases were recorded in Western Visayas, Calabarzon, Soxargen, and Northern Mindanao regions. Several areas were also placed under the alert threshold. But the health officials clarify that there is no dengue epidemic in the country, nor the spike in the cases was related to the Dengue issue. DILG Secretary Eduardo Año has also compelled all local government units to mobilize residents for cleanup drives to destroy mosquito breeding grounds, especially during this rainy season when dengue cases are expected to rise. Several areas in the country were submerged in flood water after Tropical Storm Falcon brought heavy rains over parts of Luzon and Visayas this week. In a video taken by Joy Uy, seawater was seen overflowing to the parking area of Katiklan Jetty Port, a gateway to the world-famous Boracay Island in Malay Town in the province of Aklan. The long stretch of Boracay's white sand beaches was also desolated amid the heavy rains. Mac Arthur Highway in Marilao, Bulacan was also submerged in knee-deep flood water on Thursday due to high tide and heavy rains brought by Tropical Storm Falcon. The National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council or NDRRMC reported that at least two road sections in Ifugawan Upper Kalinga provinces were also closed to public due to soil erosion on Tuesday, with several areas in Lanao del Norte experienced sudden power outages. 
classes have also been suspended in parts of Metro Manila and Luzon due to the inclement weather and storm warning signals. Pag-asa reminded the affected residents to take precautionary measures and coordinate with local DRRM offices and continue monitoring for weather updates. The United States government is still hopeful that the denuclearization talks with North Korea will still push through despite a warning from Pyongyang. This after North Korean Foreign Ministry on Tuesday complained about the planned military drill between United States and South Korea which will take place next month. North Korean government said the drill will affect efforts to resume the talks with the U.S. North Korea also hinted that they will reconsider to resume their intercontinental ballistic missile testing which have been halted since 2018, paving the way for the first Kim Trump summit in Singapore last year. It can be recalled that for several decades, North Korea has been campaigning to stop the joint military exercises between the two countries, citing that those were rehearsals for invasion. Meanwhile, these are the other top news of the week. Key officials of the Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, Anti-Red Tape Authority, or ARTA, and Civil Service Commission finally signed the implementing rules and regulations of the Ease of Doing Business Law in Pasay City on Wednesday. The law was signed by President Duterte last year which amended the Anti-Red Tape Act of 2007. Republic Act 11032 aims to make government transactions faster. The law would also correct bureaucratic red tape in government agencies that burdens businesses. It is expected to be fully implemented in the next two years. 20-year-old exclusive star magic artist Jane DeLeon was chosen by ABS-CBN Films to play the iconic role Darna in its latest film adaptation. ABS-CBN Films Managing Director Olivia Lamassan made the announcement on Wednesday morning. Lamassan said around 300 celebrities auditioned for the role, but management was unanimous in their decision to pick the newbie actress to play Darna. DeLeon now assumes the role after Liza Soberano backed out due to injury. Several people were left dead while more were injured after a fire engulfed the Kyoto Animation Studio in Japan on Thursday local time. Japanese authorities suspect that the incident could be an arson attack after a man was seen throwing a liquid to the three-story building and set fire to it. Kyoto Animation is renowned for its high-quality anime productions such as Sound Euphonium, A Silent Voice, and Violet Evergarden. Let's take a quick recap of the MB Rundown for today, July 19. Philippine National Police says it's now all systems go for President Rodrigo Duterte's fourth State of the Nation address on Monday. Manila's top diplomat, Teodoro Luxin Jr., says the Philippines will remain a member nation of the United Nations Human Rights Council despite UN-approved resolution to review the Duterte administration's war on drugs. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III urges the public to practice the forest strategy amid spike in dengue cases. Several areas in Luzon and Visayas were submerged in flood water due to Tropical Storm Falcon. And the United States is still hopeful for denuclearization talks with North Korea despite Pyongyang threat. And that's the MB Rundown. I'm Hannah Tabios.